you're either gonna love this fight or absolutely hate it. If you're this priest, you're going to hate your life on this fight. But if you're anything else, then this fight is a ton of fun. You will need first of all, let's let's look at our comp because this fight does require some some cheese. Um, Painsmith. So two tanks. As you can see, this is the first fight where we use the warrior. Prow Paladin, very good on this fight because they can bop themselves, they can bubble and walk through spikes in phase two and phase three. But you need, if you're running a prop paladin, your second tank, regardless, um, needs to be a mobile tank. And that is the most important thing that your second tank can have is mobility. So you want a warrior or a monk, ideally. Those two are your best candidates here. Um, because with our strategy, there's a lot of tank movement. With limit strategy, there's a bit less tank movement and a bit more raid movement. Um, so if if you don't have access to like Prop Paladin and a mobile tank, so Prop Paladin Brewmaster or Prop Paladin Pro Warrior, then you might want to use limit strategy. Um, with our strategy and Echo strategy, uh, you have to use a mobile tank no matter what. Healers, you run four healers. Um, you can either run double holy paladin, double disc, or you can run double holy paladin, one disc, one um, resto shaman. The reason we added the resto shaman is actually because healing in the intermission felt super scary. Um, actually, we ran three holy paladin, one disc at some point too. Um, but this priest is going to have a very, very, very bad time on this fight. So holy paladin is really good. Resto Shaman's also pretty good. Disc Priest is strong, but if you're a Disc Priest player, you're going to hate your life on this fight. Uh, for DPS, you want very strong single target um, and very strong, a couple of very strong burst AoE. That's why we have a Retribution Paladin and Windwalker Monk. Um, both of those are very good at burst AoE and they pretty much carry the intermission ads, which I will show you. Um, so this is how phase one is going to look. Um, these markers are, go you're going to use these markers throughout the entire fight. So in phase one and phase two, star, orange, and purple are your chains players. So the three range DPS um, who get the chains stand on these three markers. In the last phase, it changes, but I will show you a different diagram for that. So in phase one, you pull the boss from here. Your raid stacks up in this corner. Healers, tanks, everyone just stands in this corner. You pull the boss, pull him to this corner, and your three chains go to the center. Doesn't matter who stand on, stands on which mark. Uh, we just went based on when did you get there. If you got there first, you go to the furthest so on and so forth. Um, so when the tank toss happens, your main tank needs to go behind these marks on the opposite side of the platform. So your tank will go to this corner. That means that green is your safe area. You are only going to be playing in the green area. Um, your green area in phase one does not change. Um, so tank gets the debuff, they run out past the chains into the corner. They explode, the spikes go out vertical and horizontal. Uh, same from these three chain players, but everyone in the green area is safe. The boss with the off tank here safe and DPS can just keep doing their thing. If you get this set of balls that spawn, your raid will always go and kill the closest one to them. So I'll just use skull marker for that as well. This skull marker is the one that we would kill. Um, it's very important that you look at the tank toss timing though. So if the tank is out, let's say he ran over here and the tank mechanic is about to happen, you cannot leave the safe area. If you leave the safe area, you die. So what you do is you wait for the tank explosion to go off, then your whole raid moves, kills this 
spike as it's rolling over. Um, everyone else moves through with the boss. And these spikes will keep rolling. Your chains will time out as the spikes are getting towards the last rows. So your tank needs to make his way back around, go through. Your three chain players just scoot backwards, backwards, backwards as these spikes are rolling towards them. And then once the whole raid is through, they can also go through in order. Um, so that's phase one. And in phase one, we always double back and use this corner as our safe spot. In phase two, you will have, you will start with the boss. Um, you get ads. You'll see once I do the walkthrough, you get ads, you kill them. Then you pull the boss to a safe area. Now this safe area will actually change and you will use all four safe areas depending on which ball set you get. So these four corners will be safe areas. Um, if your raid is on blue, you play it exactly the same way as phase one. But now let's say that you get a spike set that starts rolling towards you from skull. So if you get the skull spike set, okay, that just disappeared. So let's say that you have the three people with chains in the middle. This wall of spikes appears. Your tank goes far. He explodes. After the tank explosion happens, that's when everyone can start DPS move down and DPS the corner one. So you kill the corner one, move through. Your chains will have to move towards the top of the platform, then move through. And now you're using Skull as your safe zone. Uh, and depending on which ad set you get, your safe zone alternates, right? So let's say that after we move to Skull, the next set of balls spawned on the X row. You run to the X row, kill this one, and now the whole raid will position on X. And now this is your safe zone. Um, so it's very important that you know where your safe zone is, because if you ever move outside of it during a tank mechanic, you die. Uh, it's, it's that simple. So largely phase two is the same as phase one with a few caveats. So a very specific thing that you have to pay attention to is which spike set you get. We move into our first jail cell here, the first safe zone. Yeah, boss is here, we're DPSing, we're happy. Now you get this set that spawns close to the raid. For your DPS, this set is the easiest one to kill. So this is the best spawn you can get. However, if this set happens, then your chain targets need to make an adjustment. So these set, this set of spike balls will start rolling towards you as the tank mechanic is happening. So the tank runs out, goes in the corner, and these balls are rolling towards you. Now, as they're rolling towards you, you will, the safe zone will become smaller and smaller and smaller, obviously, because they're rolling towards you. So what you need to do to compensate for this is the three chain markers move back one square away from the spiked balls. So if the spiked balls are coming towards them, the three chain markers move down one square each. That's it. Um, the only thing you need to make sure is that the furthest mark moves first, then the second, then the third. Otherwise, you're just going to bump each other and kill each other. So you start in the center. You notice that you are getting the close spawn. Raid leader needs to call out that the chain markers need to adjust one square. So spike ball spawn. The chain markers adjust. So actually, let me move this in the correct order there too. So you go down, down, down. And this opens up an extra row of safe zone for the raid in which to stand. Uh, that is very important because these balls are going to be on row four, either row three or row four, by the time they explode. Um, so your chain markers just need to adjust one square, and that's it. So that is the hardest thing to deal with in this phase, is if you get a close spawn and your chains need to adjust. Everything else in this phase, fairly straightforward. Phase three positioning changes even more drastically, and the timings of phase three change as well. So in phase three, again, you get adds, 
you kill them, your whole raid is up here. Um, you kill the adds, you get the chains. Your chains go to the middle, and now you will get a set of spiked balls. But the spiked balls will start rolling much before the tank mechanic happens. So let's say that you get, once again, the close spawn. So now what you have to do is all your chain markers move to the far edge from where the spike spawns. The spike spawned on the top row, all your chains go to the bottom row. They need to adjust all the way down here. This is because these balls are going to be on about row four when the tank mechanic goes off. This also means that your tank needs to find a way to run through these spikes and go to the far corner. So your whole raid is DPSing Skull. The tank mechanic will go off when the balls are about three rows in. This, this is why we shift the chains to the back of the platform. Because if the chains were still in the middle here, bam, 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 as the tank mechanic went off, they would just kill everyone that's standing right here. So it's much easier for them to be further away from the tank to also take less damage, but also to open up space for your raid. Um, and you mirror this movement wherever you go. So let me move the marks back. Go here, here, here. So let's say that you get um, the opposite side. So this is one of the tricky ones. When you phase, so you phase the boss into phase three, everyone's in the center, and you get the opposite spawn. So if you get this spawn, then your whole raid needs to move around to be able to DPS the, this ball right here. Your chains need to shift to the top of the platform and your second tank or main tank, whoever's getting hit, needs to go to this corner. And again, the balls are going to be about three or four rows in when the tank mechanic goes off. So you just need to make sure that your chains are noticing where the balls are spawning and moving to the opposite side. Um, and one more thing here is that the formation of the chains doesn't matter. You can have them in a diagonal. You can have like one chain here, one here, one here. As long as they're not on the same row, you're fine. We just made it a diagonal because that's an easy rule to follow. First person to get to the platform or to the square that they need to be anchors and everyone else positions them themselves based on the first person. All right, Painsmith is a hard fight. So that is all the movement that you need to know. So now let's look at how it looks in practice because this fight actually kind of bangs. Okay, so we pulled the boss. I need to grab some water after this, man. You can see we have Mark set up and we're using this corner as the first safe spot. Um, you will also have to use the safe zone for dropping the traps, and then the tank will need to detonate the traps. So you can see chain set up in a diagonal, tank goes opposite corner. I pause it here. You can see this is exactly the safe spot that we have. So this one of these corners, whichever the raid is standing in, this is the safe zone that you have. And this will not change in any of the phases if you follow our positioning. You get a set of spike balls. You kill the closest one on the edge. You run through. Chains run through, and you double back. You go back to your safe corner. Second tank mechanic happens. This one is way more lenient because there's no chains happening. As you can see, this whole area is safe um, because there's no chains. You get traps. We just place traps on the edge of this platform. It, there's no assigned spots. As long as it's within the safe zone and it's on the edge, you're fine. Then our tank runs through and detonates them one by one. Um, and traps is what you use healing cooldowns on. 
Then you get third tank mechanic, second set of spike balls. Um, you wait for the tank mechanic, then you go kill the closest spiked ball. Run through. Chains run through, double back. We're always in this corner. You get your fourth tank mechanic. This is super safe, nothing else happening. Right here, stop DPS. You need to milk boss damage because, or boss time, because you need healing cooldowns. So you want to spend the maximum amount of time in this phase to be able to get cooldowns back up in phase two. And you're going to do the same for phase two to phase three. So at 73%, we stop damage. No one hits the boss. We are waiting for a new set of spiked balls. Again, you get tank mechanic, explosion. It goes off, then you move to the balls. Kill the closest one. You move through, and you want to get the boss to about 71.5%, 71%. Don't go much lower than that. Now, once you get the sixth tank mechanic, you want to start hitting the boss as, as hard as possible because you can get extra boss damage, which will help you in the next phase. So the boss phase is at 70.5. As long as the animation for the tank mechanic happens, the boss will not start his intermission until this is finished. So you can actually get quite a few percent of boss damage in here. So we pull the boss away from the spawn or the spot where he will run to, so he has to, to traverse the whole platform, and the tank runs to the opposite corner. So we're pushing boss, pushing boss, pushing boss, and we got two extra percent just from pulling the boss away from where he has to jump up. Now, once the intermission spawns, you need a very specific gateway that you need to have set up. So you need to have a lock gate three rows in, max distance. This is what it looks like. Bam. Bam. You need to have this set up for the intermission. Everyone needs to set focus to the bottom half of the gateway. Hit the boss, hit the boss, and now you have to group up. So you group up after you bait the first set, and from here you want to chain movement speeds. Wind rush and roar. So we had three wind rushes and two roars uh, for a total of five movement speed increases. You always want to have extra movement speed while doing this phase. Um, if you don't have access to that many, then make compromises somewhere. This very first part, you don't really need movement speed. And also after doing the skips, you don't need movement speed. So from here, you will alternate between having set safe zones and random safe zones. So if the safe zone is on the right side, the next one will always be left side. Um, then every third one, you either get a spiked wave where there's no gap and you need to lock gate or skip it. Um, and then again, you get a middle one. So you'll see what I'm talking about here. This first safe zone is always around the middle, either middle row, one square left of middle or one square right of middle. This first gap is always consistent. As soon as fire spawns, you start moving. If you get the right side safe zone on the second one, you will always want to pause when you get to the edge here. So you get to the edge, pause, wait for the fire, then run through. If you get the left side one, you never pause. You just keep running the entire time. So you run, then you go left, then you go back right. As you can see, we're chaining wind rushes. You go through this one, and this is where there's no gap. On this one, you have two options. With our strategy, everyone uses their own stuff to skip over this one. You can vent your teleport, night fey blink, goblin jump. All the goblin jumping around the outside is super dangerous and not a very high success rate. You might have to do it. You can use bubbles, you can use bops, uh, any blinks. 
there are tons of ways of getting around this one. If every single person in your raid has a way of getting over this, this wave that has no gap in it, then make sure they use it. If a couple people don't have a way of getting over this one, then you need to use the Warlock Gate to get over this one. So it becomes a little bit trickier. Um, so as this wave with no gap is getting closer to you, you will need everyone in the raid to stack up on the Warlock Gate and take it. If you watch Limit Skill video, I believe they use that strategy. So for us, everyone just skips over with their own stuff. I bubble over everyone else, venti reports and stuff like that. Then you group up in the middle. And again, you get a new wave of balls that spawn on the left side. Um, so this gap is always in the center. So warlock gating is always safe. We got the right side gap here. Make sure someone's calling it. We pause, wait for fire, then move. Now you go center. And with our strategy, um, which is echo strategy, everyone stops before the warlock gate. You wait for the fire, then you move. You wait for the fire to hit. As soon as the fire hits, everyone clicks the gateway. After you click the gateway, you stop. You don't move because the ads that spawn at the end of the intermission spawn based on where players are standing. So if someone's randomly off to the side, you will get an ad randomly off to the side. So as soon as we take the gateway, everyone's pixel perfect stacked and no one is moving. Whenever the circles spawn, everyone spreads out. These ads spawn. Um, you want to use two minute cooldowns here and cleave them down with the boss. You need to kill these ads before they explode. This is where Red Paladins, Windwalker Monks, a um, couple of their classes are really strong. As soon as you kill those ads, move to the safe corner, as same as phase one. Now you can see that we got the close spike set. So we kill the closest one that's on the edge. Kill it, run through, chains follow through, and then you have to deal with the ripples. The biggest advice I have for dealing with these ripple spikes is plant in a square and wait for it to come to you. Don't just run at it and try to cross it as fast as possible. I always wait until either the last or second to last square to cross them. I just plant and then I cross. Um, they ha since hotfixed it for them to be a little bit more forgiving, but when we were doing this, there was, if you were in movement, so like if you were randomly running around and you tried to cross them, sometimes you'd get hit even if it looked like you were safe. And that is because the way WoW updates your player position, whenever you stop moving, your player position gets instantly updated. So if you pause and then move, you are always guaranteed to be safe. And you will see me do that on every single set of ripples. I'm never just randomly running through them. Get traps, drop them in the corner. Um, you drop raid cooldowns, darkness, barrier, AMZ, whatever you have, rally, AM, um, whatever you want to assign. Same thing, I pause, I run through. Chains that go out, whenever the ripple is coming, make sure they move to the edge. So along this outside row, they can move either down the platform that way or down the platform this way. They need to pick a way and move. They can't stand in the raid because they're going to knock people off. Again, you get tank mechanic during chains and you get a ball of spikes. So this is the set where I told you that the middle row needs to adjust. The three people in the middle that have chains shift down a row. And as soon as they shift down, they open up more safe space for the raid. You get another tank mechanic and you get a set of spiked balls. So here you wait. Like DPS, as soon as they see those spawn, they want to run at them. You can't. You have to wait on this tank explosion, then go. So you will see me kind of stand here. Tank explosion goes off. Bam. Everyone goes. Kills the, the outside edge spiked ball. When this spiked ball dies, you need to get the boss below 43%. Uh, don't push him yet into the next phase, but get him below 43%. If you get him below 43%, you will not have to deal with the third set of traps here. So that is a very important DPS check that you have to make. You kill the ball, move through. Boss is under 43%. 
traps are about to spawn, but they're not going to because they added... It's a new mechanic that they added in this raid. It comes up on a, quite a few bosses, but bosses sometimes stop doing mechanics for like 20 or 30 seconds when they're close to pushing an intermission phase. So you get the boss sub 43 and you stop. Then you get him sub 41, 42, and you stop again. You wait for this tank mechanic. No one's hitting the boss here. You can see no one's hitting the boss. Everyone's just AFKing. You want to move through the tank mechanic or the tank ripples so everyone is in the safe zone. Once everyone is in the safe zone, that's when you push the boss. Move through, push the boss. And again, he pushes at 40.5. So now you just repeat the kind of like the first intermission with a few tweaks. So again, you get a middle gap. Now we got the left side, so we never stop moving. There's no pauses. If you get the right side, you pause. If you get left side, you never stop moving. Run through, run through, run through. And again, this one will be immunities for us. So this is the last gap we move through. And here, everyone either uses whatever skips they have or immunities. Um, again, if you're doing limit strat, then you want to use Warlock Gate on this one. Then we meet up in the middle. We get the right side spot, go to it, wait for the fire. As soon as fire spawns, we move. We go to the middle, we bait the fire. So this timing is slightly different. We bait the fire off the Warlock Gate. And as soon as the fire hits the ground, that's when you take the Warlock Gate. It, it's very close. As you can see, the spikes are basically on top of the Warlock Gate. But you need to wait that out, otherwise you will have a bad time. You bait the embers, you lust, and you just second pot, um, well, or first pot, because you don't need, really need it in the first phase, and you nuke the boss. The chains here, as soon as the adds are dead, the chains are already starting to look at where the spiked balls are coming from. If you remember, um, I talked about this before the fight, the chains will go to the opposite edge of where the balls are coming from. Right now we're getting the top row, that means that all the chains will shift opposite and go to the bottom row. So actually you got a glimpse there. Now you're hitting this, your tank goes through, and as you can see, the balls are four rows in when the tank mechanic goes off. So the tank needs to be past the spike balls when it happens. Everyone can immediately go to these uh, unlike phase two. So in phase two, you pause, wait for tank mechanic, then go to the ball. In phase three, as soon as the spike ball spawns, you run at it and kill it. Everyone moves through, chains move through last. You get the ripples, move through ripples, and now you use this corner. In phase three, I advise that you move through the ripple on the second or third square from the end because you then need to drop traps. If you wait until the very last one, it's a bit sketchy. And you just do that over and over and over. Um, move through. New set of spike balls. It's spawning close to us. That means that the chains move all the way to the bottom of the platform. Furthest point away from the raid and tank goes in the, into the top right corner. You kill it. Move through. And as you can see, after each spiked ball we kill, we default back to a corner. The raid leader calls which corner, uh, but it's whichever one you're closest to. So chains, again, move through towards the center. You get spiked ball set three. This is the only one that's different from the rest. As soon as it spawns, we still run at it and kill it. One difference will be that traps that come out after the third spiked ball set, so at the end of the fight, do not go to a corner. They go to the center of the platform. So you kill it, run through. You already start moving up a little bit. These traps that come out at the end of the fight move towards the center. 
And this is because this is the end of the phase and you need to deal with these traps before the phase ends. Um, so the tank mechanic goes off and it will cause ripples to start moving inward from the outside and from the tank corner. So you have to detonate these traps before either of those happen. So you step, 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 and then the last one gets hit by spikes. You move through and you just have to kill the boss before the phase is over. Uh, the boss was standing in a bad spot because our tank DC'd, um, rips loot, but we still managed to pull it off. Now, as soon as you only have one corner, one square left, you can use all immunities and you can bop someone if you have, uh, just to milk more time. But we didn't really need it here. So boss dies, and that's Painsmith. So overall, a very, very difficult fight, and you need very specific and coordinated movement in phase two or in the intermissions. And then phase two and phase three is very difficult movement for the range DPS.